all of our hitters like to know different things. Um, we all have different relationships with the guys. So, you know, Adley might ask Fuller a different question than he asked me, and you know, Gunner might ask something different of me than he'll ask of Borg. So, um, I think it's just really on each other to hold each other accountable to make sure we're, we're doing good work um, and just uphold the standards that we have here with the Orioles. What are some things that you're seeing from Framber that you think will benefit the Orioles offense today? I, I think a lot of our guys will probably lean on their experiences last year. I thought uh, we had really good at bats last year at Camden um, and I think even like what two years ago we kind of ended that uh, quality start streak against him so you know hopefully it's more the same where we just we control the strike zone we get pitches over the middle we hit them hard that's kind of the process we go through every day, just regardless of who's out there, you know. Um, and I think that's kind of the strength of our team. You guys lead the majors and homers, 21 straight games with the home run. Just how impressed have you been with the power just up and down the lineup this season? Yeah, we're, we're pretty lucky to have a front row seat in the dugout uh, of some of that guys. You know, we probably have, you know, I'm pretty partial, but I think we have the, probably the deepest lineup and crew in, in, in the major leagues. Um, you know, like today we, we have Cedric on the bench. He's a really good guy. He's a power threat. You know, we. You know, the other day we had Kowser on the bench, huge power threat as a rookie. You know, up and down our lineup, there's a there's a guy that can jump you at any point in time. Um, so it's not something we sat down in spring training and was like, hey, boys, like let's hit a whole bunch of homers this year. It's just kind of a process-oriented approach, and it just has lent itself to hitting home runs. And, you know, when you have a Gunnar Henderson, that also makes things a little bit easier. Uh, and then you got it's Tony Santander in his favorite month. Um, that's pretty fun, too. So. What adjustments have you seen Santander make from that first month? Maybe a slow start for him, but now really just unlocking that power. Yeah, I think I think as hitters go on through their careers, and every season's a little bit different. And I think Tony just he took some time at the beginning of the the year to figure out you know who he was and how he was going to operate. Um, Tony's strength is that he's really intelligent and he he knows how pitchers are going to attack him. Um, he made some slight swing tweaks, I, I guess, or just maybe a little bit more focus on some parts of the swing. I think maybe right around that St. Louis time, and you've seen since then, I mean, it's like OPSing like a thousand. So it's not just June, it's kind of the end of May where you kind of saw that happening. Um, we kind of went through this last year. Um, and that's the special thing about Tony, he's just been so consistent. Um, it's, it's really a joy to watch just his preparation and understanding how he thinks the pitcher is going to attack him and then going to watch the game and talk through at bats with him and just that inner battle that he like really sees with the pitcher like you know you watch baseball and like that's just it it's like the pitcher versus hitter that's tony like every day just like figuring out what's coming next anticipating getting a pitch driving it uh, i just i really love i really love what he does i love how he prepares i love watching him play um i've learned a lot from him and, you know, I'll tell stories about coaching Tony Santander you know, my, my whole career. Interesting. When we look at Adley, um, we know he knows his way around the strike zone. This guy can get a walk any time. The pitcher will give it to him. And yet the walk rate was way down early. Was that a kind of concerted effort by him and you guys to increase production? Is that what that kind of led to? I mean, it's a fumbling question here, but I think you kind of know where I'm at. Yeah, I, I get the question. Uh, I don't think there was any specific – you know, decree to Adley, like, hey, like, we need you to do more. Like, no, like, that's it's pretty tough to ask a guy who just won a silver slugger to do more. Um, I think it's just kind of the way the season started. You know, guys struggle sometimes, and guys do things a little bit different sometimes for one run reason or another, and, you know, maybe you try to do something, or maybe you see that guys are attacking a little bit differently, and, and, and that's just the way things go. But, you know, he's got a lot on his plate. He's, he's a top-tier catcher. He's handling... Like one of the best pitching staffs in baseball, he's hitting in the top of the order. Like there's just a lot, a lot for him to handle. And and sometimes like even for a guy like Adley, like you know, it, it could be overwhelming. And I'm not saying it was, but you know, I fully expect expect Adley to just be a very very productive player. Whether it's a low walk rate, high slug, or lower slug, high walk rate, he's going to find a way to OPS. You know, eight to nine hundred, begin the conversation to win a Silver Slugger, be a top war catcher, handle a pitching staff. And I think that's really what like. We signed up for it with, As with coaches. Adley. Would you take the slug over the walk rate? You'd love to have both, but if you'd have one, I'll take a guy who can do both. You know, I I'll take I'll take Adley at his best, where he hits two home runs in a game and against the, the Blue Jays, and it can kind of take over and win you a couple games that way. Or I'll take Adley from the other night, where he had five hits, started off yesterday's game with two walks. Like he can do everything. You know, whatever is asked for him, he can do that. Um, and, and so I'll, I'll take that. Like I, I don't want to key. I would never want to keyhole a guy with that kind of talent. 
into just being one way. It's, you know, we, we might play the Guardians, and it might be a series where, like, hey, like, you're going to get a few pitches over the middle of the plate, you know, in the top of the lineup, like, take your shots. You know, we play, might play another team, like, the, you know, that, that doesn't throw a lot of strikes where it's like, hey, like, let's be a little more selective, and I'm, I'm positive about they can take walks then, too. So you'll be telling Tony stories for the rest of your career. Do you have a favorite one that you can share with us? A uh, favorite story? Just, just, the, just the way he talks after a bats and just how he approaches his at-bats. And it's honestly just the day-to-day when you come in the cage, you just kind of never really know what's going to what's gonna come out of his mouth a little bit. But, uh, yeah, uh, just his overall personality. Um, he's very unique, one of a kind. Um, personally, I, I don't think, like, the league in general really appreciates him as much as they should, especially like coming into like the all-star type stuff. That would be like my guy, like let's push that guy. I love him.